Hey guys, uh, Future Venomous here. First off, I just want to thank everybody so much for all the support. We just hit 900 subscribers and I believe we're well on the way to 1k subscribers. So thank y'all for that. And second, I just wanted to give y'all a couple insights on the Blender tutorial real quick. This is not going to be a basic Blender skills tutorial, so I won't be covering like movement and stuff. So make sure that you look at something for that before you start this. And this entire thing wasn't recorded all at the same time. So there might be some changes in my mic quality or my voice. So just be aware of that. I will also be making a follow up to this for putting Splatoon 2 clothes on Splatoon 3 models, so just watch out for that in the future. And for reference, the order of the tutorial is going to go downloading models, importing and attaching the models, parenting, and then finally texturing. But uh, other than that stuff, I think we're all good. So uh, Passive Venomous, take it away. Models, where do you get them? It's a little website called the Models Resource. I'll link it in the description. This is typically where you get your characters, accessories, clothing, etc. Obviously, we're gonna be in the Splatoon 3 section of Models Resource, so head over there. Just make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page once you search it up. It's gonna be there, I promise. Okay, so first things first, we gotta download an actual character. The first models you'll see on the page are probably gonna be the Inkling and Octoling models. So go ahead, click on the little thumbnail, and download the zip files. These zip files include the object data files for hair, basic body model, and eyes. Once you get your basic models downloaded, now it's time for the clothes. Now, the basic zip file for the Inkling and Octoling model does contain the starter gear for Splatoon 3, with the exception of the cephalopods, because you'll have to download those from models resource. And that's what I'm going to be using for this video. But this is your character, so go ahead and choose whichever clothes you want to put on your model. Now, you might notice that there's not a very wide selection of clothing and shoes and stuff from the Splatoon 3 section of models resource. So if you can't find your desired clothing, head over to the Splatoon 2 section of the models resource, and I'll teach you how to put Splatoon 2 clothes on Splatoon 3 models. Okay. Now that you got your models downloaded, let's actually open up Blender. Now before we do anything, we gotta put in our add-ons. Now if you've used SFM or Gmod before, you probably know what I'm talking about. But for the uninitiated, add-ons are basically little tools that help your workflow move a little easier. Anyways, head up to the Edit tab of your Blender program. Once you get up there, go ahead and click Preferences. It's at the very bottom. Once you're there, go ahead and navigate to the little Add-ons tab of the window. Once you're in the add-on section, go to the top of the window and make sure that that little community button is blue. Once that's done, go to the search bar and type in the word mix. A little add-on called Restore Mix RGB should pop up. Go ahead and click the little checkbox to enable it. And now repeat the process for the next add-on, which is called Node Wrangler. Go ahead and enable that and hop back into your 3D plane. So assuming that I've taught you how to download and extract all your files for the models, let's go ahead and import some. To import a file, just go to the file tab right here, slide down to the import section right here, and press import collada.dae. Now you're going to go to whichever folder that you've extracted your files for. The folder should be called Octoling or Inkling, whichever player model that you decided to download. And you should be able to view all of the files for the basic player character. As you can see here, we have things like player octopus, we have player mammal, we have all the different types of models that you're going to need to make a basic character. But for now, let's just start with importing our character's body. So, if you're going to do a girl, you need to import player 02. If you're going to be using a boy, go ahead and import player 03. It's just in this folder right here. For the inklings, the girl will be player 00 and the boy will be player 01. So let's go ahead and import player 02 for the octoling. So once you've imported your character, you're not going to really see anything yet first. Kind of looks like a weird little orange circle thing just in your viewport here. But there actually is something there. This is your character's armature, which can be seen up here. Let's go ahead and rename it by clicking it twice to something like Octoling. You can also go ahead and delete the environment ambient lights just to clean up your viewport a little bit. Either press the delete key on your keyboard or press X to delete it. Now, we need to actually be able to see our player character. So, click this armature for your character, Octoling. Slide down to this object square right here, it's orange. And now you're going to click the top scale X and drag down to select all of these and type the number three. This will scale it up to a workable size. And as you can see, we now have a viewable character model. Now we're going to switch our render settings. So at the moment, we're only seeing exactly what the model is for the character. No textures, no nothing like that. So go ahead and click this little shaded half circle right here, viewport shading. 
It allows you to see your textures and it just makes your work generally easier. Now we can see our character's body. We can see their skin, eyelids, all that good stuff. So if you notice our character's mouth is looking a bit funky and that's because there's actually a lot of mouths placed onto your character at once. This is because Splatoon doesn't really animate their character's mouths Rather, they just switch the model for the mouth that their character is currently using. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But for now, just go ahead and click the drop down arrow for your player armature. All you're going to do here is disable the viewport and render shading for these different mouths. So, if you haven't already, go ahead and click this little filter setting up here. You're going to want to toggle on disable in viewports. It just makes your life easier. Now go ahead and disable the viewport display for all of the other mouths except for mouth 00. We're also going to disable the render for this just so our character doesn't accidentally render with four different mouths. You're also going to want to disable the render and viewport display for body model inner. Now our character is ready for us to actually put clothes and stuff on. So we're going to be using the basic starter gear for your character. The basic starter shirt and the basic starter shoes are already packed in with your character's player model. However, the cephalopods you will have to download from the model's resource, but I should have already explained that in the first half. So let's go to File, Import, Colada, and we will type in the search bar here, CLT, which stands for clothing, the basic clothing for your character. This is located in the Octoling folder that you should have downloaded from the model's resource. As you can see, we have the .dae folder for our starter shirt, so go ahead and open that up. now. Every single time you open a Splatoon model into Blender, you're going to have to scale it up to whichever size your character is. In this case, that will be three. So let's get rid of that environment ambient light. Let's rename our armature to something like shirt. Now let's go back to our object data tab and scale it up to three. Now that we can see our character's shirt, you might notice that it's not actually on their body. In order to fix this, you're going to want to go ahead and click the armature for your character. Go up here in the top left and switch from object mode to pose mode. Now pose mode is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to move your character around to a certain pose. But before you do anything, go slide down to this little icon of the green stick man. Open the viewport display drop down tab and select in front. This will allow you to see your character's bones way easier. Alright, so in order to get our shirt onto our character's body, we need to match it with the proper bone to do that. So, go ahead right here, select your character's waist bone. It should be located right here. You might have to click it a couple times, but it should eventually show up right here. So let's do it right there. It should say Octoling Waist. Now, you're going to press Shift and then S. Then, select cursor to selected. Your cursor is basically what tells which objects to go where. Now slide back into object mode, select the armature for your shirt, press shift S, and then selection to cursor. And there you go. Your character's shirt is now on their body. Now let's add our character's pants. So let's go back, file, import, Colada. Now slide back into the Octoling folder and type in the search bar BTM, which stands for bottom. Go ahead and select the appropriate pants for your character. They're divided up by gender, so each pants is 001M or 001F. We're going to go ahead and use 001F, which is the regular sweatpants. Now remember, delete your environment ambient light by pressing X, rename your armature to something like BTM, and scale it back up to an appropriate workable size from 0 0.025 to 3. And now, since our cursor is already at our character's waist, all we need to do here is press Shift S and then Selection to Cursor. And there we go. Our character's pants are on. Don't worry about them clipping for now. I'll teach you guys how to fix that. Okay, so our character now has a shirt and a pants, but what about the shoes? Let's go ahead and import those real quick. So, File, Import, Colada.dae, and we'll go back into the Octoling folder, but this time we're going to type in the search bar SHS, which obviously stands for shoes. Go ahead, select the shoe model, and it's in our viewport now. So go ahead, get rid of that environment ambient light, rename your armature to something like shoe one, and scale it. Now, since we need to move our shoes to our character's feet, go ahead and select the armature for your character once more. Slide back into pose mode, and select this bone right here for your character's ankle. Go ahead and press Shift S, cursor to selected, and then head back into object mode. 
Now select the armature for your shoe and press selection to cursor. And this should move your character's shoe right onto the Now you might notice that your character's foot is clipping through your shoe. That's okay, we can fix that. There's two ways you can do it. You can head back into pose mode, select your character's ankle assist bone, press shift S, cursor to select it, head back into object mode, select the armature for your shoe, press shift S to move your shoe completely onto your character's foot, or you can just move it up in object mode. However, I do not recommend this as it can cause some disparities with your character's movement. So now that our character's shoe is fully on their foot, you might notice that we only actually have one shoe model for our character, the left shoe. Now to fix this, all you have to do is select the armature for your shoe, hold shift, press shift D, and then X, move it across the X axis until it is properly on your character's right foot, and now press control M, X. You might need to adjust that a little bit more since I was a little off there, but that's the basic idea. And now our character has a left shoe and a right shoe. Make sure to rename the right shoe to something like shoe two, just to clean it up a little bit, get that workflow together. Now our character has shirt, a pants, and shoes. You might notice that your character doesn't actually have eyebrows or hair yet, so let's go ahead and do that now. Now go ahead and select the armature for your character once again, head back into pose mode. You're gonna select the bone for their head this time, which should be located right here. It looks like a big tree branch. Now press shift S, cursor to selected, back into object mode, and now we're gonna head back into our player's folder. Once you get into the Octoling folder, you're going to want to type in the word H-A-R, which stands for hair or har. Now you're going to have to brute force it if you wanna find exactly the right hairstyle you want for your character, but I do know for a fact that hair 003 is the afro. So we're gonna go ahead and choose hair 003, F. Get rid of that environment ambient light and we can rename this to something like Afro. And now go ahead and scale up your model. Now all we have to do is press Shift S, selection to cursor, and it should move the Afro right into our character's head. But you may notice that it looks a little bit off. It looks like there's a whole bunch of globs in it. And this is because the Afro has several different models for different hats. All you have to do here is click the drop down for the armature. All you need to do is disable the viewport display for every single one that you're not using. So in this case, we're gonna be using the base of the Afro, which is just the regular round Afro. So all we gotta do is disable the viewports for the other Afros and disable their renders as well. And that cleans it up a little bit nicely. And now let's do our character's eyebrows. So go ahead, close that drop down tab for your Afro, head back to the file tab, import Collada, And now we're gonna go back into the Octoling folder and type in the word EYB, stands for eyebrow. Now there's several different ones, but they're in the exact order that they are placed into the game. So eyebrow 00 will be the regular eyebrows. Eyebrow 01 will be the scarred eyebrows. Eyebrow 02 will be the big Cheeto eyebrows. And eyebrow 03 will be the thin angry eyebrows. For this one, we will be using the thin angry eyebrows. So go ahead and select eyebrow Octo 003 F if you are using these. Let's rename our armature to EYB for eyebrow. Let's get rid of our environment ambient light. Let's go ahead and select the armature for our eyebrows, scale it up, press Shift S, selection to cursor, and now our character has a nice pair of angry eyebrows. Congratulations, you've moved all of your models onto your character fully. Great job. Now, how do we go about actually attaching our models to our character? Because if you notice, our character will not actually move with any of the attached clothes. In order to fix this, we'll have to parent all of our clothes to our actual character. This is very simple. All you need to do is select the armature for each piece of clothing that you will be attaching to your character. Go ahead and select the shirt. Press and hold control. Select the BTM, which is the pants. While still holding control, select shoe one, shoe two, and then finally, your player character. Now, go ahead and press Control P to object. This will now parent all of the clothing to your character's armature. So, if we move our character now, you'll notice that all of our clothing moves with our character. But, if we go into pose mode, you'll notice that our clothing does not actually move with our character's model completely. So, to fix this, all you need to do is slide back into object mode, Select the mesh for each piece of clothing, 
head to this little blue wrench tab, which is the modifiers tab. And for this little object right here, you're going to select the name of your character, which in this case is Octoling. And that will allow your clothing to move with your character's actual body. So we'll do that for each piece of clothing right here. And now our character's clothes actually move with their body. We can move the spine, we can move the arms, everything will move. But wait, there's something still wrong. The shoes. If you noticed, our shoes move with only one ankle, which we don't want. To fix this, we need to change the shoes vertex groups. Now this will also apply if you are using a Splatoon 2 piece of gear with a Splatoon 3 model, but I'll give you all a separate tutorial on that. But hang tight. Now we need to change the vertex group for our right shoe. If you click the mesh for your shoe right here, you'll notice that Now if you click them if you select now if you select the mesh for your shoe, you can go ahead to this green triangle right here and you can see that its vertex groups are all made for the left foot. Ankle assist L, ankle L, and toe L. All we have to do is replace each L with an R. Now our character's right shoe actually moves with our right foot. Now let's look at headgear. I wanted to hold off on importing a piece of headgear for our character for this reason. Let's go back into object mode and let's go ahead and import a pair of cephalopods for our character. You will have to download the cephalopods for models resource, but I should have already explained that. So go ahead to file, import, colada, let's go into hats, and let's search cephalopods. And here we go, we have imported the model for our cephalopods. Same drill applies, rename them, we'll call them the airpods, and we'll get rid of that environment ambient light. Let's select our AirPods, scale them up to a workable size by pressing the three. And now let's move it onto our character's head. Now they have a nice pair of AirPods. Now for headgear and hair, you can't just parent them to your character all willy nilly. You need to go into pose mode, select what you are going to be attaching to your character's head. In this case, the AirPods and the Afro. You're gonna press and hold control and select all three. Now make sure that your character's head bone is selected. You should see your octoling head right here. Now press Control P and instead of object, you're going to be selecting a bone relative. This will let your character's hair and headgear move appropriately with your character's head. Now lastly, let's do the eyebrows. If you want posable eyebrows, you need to attach them appropriately. So for our character's eyebrows, we're going to be using bone constraints. So head back into pose mode, as we should already be in, and select the head root bone for your eyebrows. Let's click this little blue button with the bone going through it right here for bone constraints. Select add bone constraint, copy transforms. For our target, we will be using the octoling character, which is our character's armature. For bone, we'll be selecting a head. Now the eyebrows will copy the transforms of your character's head, which means they'll move with your character's head. But we need to do this for every single bone included in the eyebrow. So go ahead and select the head eyebrow R. Copy transforms, octoling, head, eyebrow, R. And do the same for the left eyebrow. Copy transforms, octoling, head, eyebrow, L. Go ahead and select your character's forehead, which is head intercostal. Remember, target, octoling, head, intercostal. And now, your character's eyebrows are fully posable with your character's body. So if you move our eyebrows with our actual character here, you can see that they actually work better. So we can do an angry, we can do a surprise. It's very... And now your character's eyebrows should move with their head. And just to clean your characters up a little bit, go ahead and select the eyebrow, press and hold control, select your character, press control P, and then object. And now you have a fully posable character with clothes on cephalopods, shirt, shoes, and pants, hair and eyebrows included. Congratulations, you've gotten through the first part of the tutorial. Give yourself a pat on the back. So, now that you've gotten through the first half, let's go ahead and texture our character. So head into the shading tab of your Blender program. Select the little half circle right here to see your character's textures. And as you can see, our character is not entirely textured yet. So let's go ahead and start with their skin. So go ahead and click the model for their mouth right here. As you can see, we have these colorful boxes called nodes. Now, 
First things first, get rid of the ambient and reflective nodes for your character's texture because you don't need those. Now, click on this big green node right here called the Principled BSTF, press it backspace to reset it. And now all we're left with is the M Face ALB node. ALB stands for albedo, and albedo is essentially the base color texture for anything that you're going to be using related to Splatoon. Let's go ahead and add in our other texture factors. So go ahead and press Shift D to duplicate it. Now, we're gonna go into this file folder right here, and it will take us to our character's player folder with all of their textures, body, face, all of that. So let's go ahead and type face into the search bar. You're gonna see we have several different textures right here, but we're gonna start with face RGH. So go ahead and open that image. Now, take the color output of the RGH node and put it into the roughness tab of your, into the roughness input of your principled BSDF. You're gonna go ahead and put that into the roughness input of your character's principled BSDF. And make sure you switch your color space to non-color. Now we're gonna duplicate it again. This time we're gonna be doing the normal map. So head back into your character's texture folder, type in face, and you should see M face NRM. It's that weird LSD trip looking thing right here. There's something that we have to do before we actually attach our character's NRM texture to our principal BSDF. You're gonna press Shift A, search, type in normal map, take the color output of your character's NRM node, put it into the color input of the normal map. Switch its color space to non-color. Select the normal output of the normal map and attach it to the normal input of the principal BSDF. You don't need to mess with the character's normal strength at all because that will just make your character's face very wrinkly. Okay, so that's our normal and roughness texture. Now let's duplicate it once more. This time we're gonna be doing the ambient occlusion of our character's face, which basically tells which shadows to go where when the character is placed under light. So type in face. Ambient occlusion should be AO right here. Ambient occlusion is special because it mixes directly with the base color texture of your character. So, so remember when I told you to install the mix RGB node add-on? Well, we're going to be using it here. All you need to do is scroll down to the miscellaneous tab of your little drop-down menu right here. Go ahead and select add mix RGB node. This will add a mix RGB node to your plane right here. Now drag that mix RGB node onto the yellow line connecting the principal BSDF and the ALB texture. We're going to set its blending mode to multiply and slide the factor slider all the way up to one. Now let's take our ambient occlusion node and take its color output and put it in the color two input of the multiply mix RGB node. Now here's the last node that we're gonna be using for our character's face right now. So go ahead and duplicate your character's albedo texture. Select that little file folder right here. Type in face, and we're going to be selecting M face TRM, which stands for transmission. Now, you'll need to duplicate the Now, you will need to duplicate your character's Mix RGB node real quick. Now, in order to do this, we need to duplicate the Mix RGB node we use right here. So go ahead and press Shift D with the... Now go ahead. Now we're going to need to duplicate the character's Mix RGB node right here. So press Shift D with it selected and drag it onto this yellow line connecting the color output of the albedo texture to the color one input of the multiply texture right here. So go ahead and place it right there. Now with this place right here, duplicate it once more, shift D, drag it up here, and what you're going to want to do is take the color output of the very first mix RGB node that our character uses right here, drag that into the color one input of the second new mix RGB node, take the transmission map for your character right here, and you're going to want to connect that to the color two input of the mix RGB node right here. And now you're going to take the color output of our brand new mix RGB node and drag it all the way into the subsurface color input of our principal BSDF. Don't worry about the subsurface yet. I'll explain it in a second. Now, how do we actually decide our character's skin color? Well, we use this little white box that we've created here with our mix RGB node. So let's go ahead and click into that. 
As you can see, we get a big color slider with all kinds of different colors for our character. Now for skin color, you're gonna wanna hang around the oranges and yellows about right here. And now all you have to do is slide it up or down depending on how dark you want your character's skin to be. So we'll slide it down a bit here. So a regular chocolate black right here. And now our character actually has a skin color. So heading back to subsurface, Subsurface is essentially how much light will pass through your character's skin when they are placed under a light. Think about it like placing your finger on a light bulb and being able to see all the blood and stuff inside of it. The darker your skin is, the less subsurface it will have. So in this case, we will be using zero subsurface for our character. So basically, the darker your skin is, the less subsurface it will have. Just keep that in mind for texturing. Now we have the bottom of our character's face fully textured and all we have to do to color our character's whole face is select the other model for their face, which you see it's called M face, and scroll down to M face 001 right here in the material slider. And that will color our entire character's face. And that should color our character's entire face. So now they have a fully textured face and head. Now let's take a look at our character's body. Now we've essentially already done the process for texturing our character's body because it's very similar to texturing your character's face as it uses a lot of the same nodes. So I'm gonna go a little quick here. So first thing, reset your principal BSDF. Select it and press back. Then you're going to delete these ambient and reflective nodes because you do not need them. Now take your character's albedo texture, duplicate it one, two, three, four, five times. Now go into this little file folder right here, type in body, and as you can see, we have an ambient occlusion texture, we have a NRM texture, given we have a roughness texture or RGH texture, and we have a transmission texture or TRM texture. So let's go ahead and select our ambient occlusion. Let's go ahead and select our ambient occlusion. Let's take our roughness. Let's take our normal map. And let's take our transmission. We'll be repeating the same process as before. So RGH goes into roughness, switch color space to non-color, NRM, remember we need to drag it down here, press shift A, search normal map in the search bar, attach the color output of the NRM texture to the color input of the normal map, take the normal output of the normal map and put it into the normal input of the principled BSDF right here, select its color space to non-color, do not mess with the strength at all, we will now take our ambient occlusion node Add a MixRGB node, drag it and place it in between the principal BSDF and albedo texture. Put the ambient occlusion into the color to input of the MixRGB node. Change its blending mode from mix to multiply and slide our factor slider all the way up to one. Now let's drag our albedo texture up here. Duplicate our MixRGB node. Take our transmission node, the TRM node. Duplicate our MixRGB node once more. Take the color output of the very first MixRGB node and put it into the color one input of the new MixRGB node. Take the transmission node and place it into the color two input of the brand new MixRGB node and take the final color output of the new MixRGB node and place it into the subsurface color input of the principal BSDF. Now in order to match our character's skin color, all you have to do is go back to our facial texture select the character's color right here, do hex, select this, control C, head back to our character's body, and now all we have to do is slide back over to hex right here in this little white block, and then control V, and our character's body now matches their face. Now you may notice that your character's body is still clipping through their pants. Let's go ahead and fix that. So select your character's body. We're going to be using a node called Gear Alpha Mask. Gear Alpha Mask will essentially turn parts of your character invisible if they are covered up or clipping through clothes. So before you do anything, go ahead and slide down to this little red half circle called Material Property. Scroll all the way down until you see a drop down tab called Settings. Go ahead and open it. We are going to set our blend mode to Alpha Clip. You will use this anytime you have a part of your character that is going to be invisible. Now with our final duplicate node, we're going to head into the file folder and head into the folder called Gear Alpha Mask. Now there is a Gear Alpha Mask for each piece of clothing. So you have shirts, shoes, and pants. We're gonna go ahead and type in BTM. We're going to use BTM006 since we are using a long pair of pants. 
Now all I have to do is drag the color output of the gear alpha mask texture into the alpha input of the principled BSDF. And woohoo, our characters no longer clipping through their pants. Congratulations, you have fully textured your character's face and skin. Good job. Now, let's move on to their eyes and eyelids. Now eyes and eyelids are a bit different from skin and face. They don't use as many textures, but they do require some additional input to get them working fully. So let's select the eyelids model for our character. First thing you're gonna do here is slide into the material properties tab, go down to settings and switch it to blend mode from opaque to alpha clip. Now we need to just get rid of our ambient and reflective nodes right here. Reset our principled BSDF by pressing backspace. Select the albedo texture for your eyelids. Duplicate it once. Open the file folder for the duplicated node. Type in eyelids. Select M eyelids OPA1. Take the color output of the OPA texture and put it into the alpha input of the principled BSDF right here. Now, once you've completed those steps, you may notice that your character's eyelids are looking a bit jank. So let's fix that. Press Shift A. In the search bar, type in texture coordinates. Press Shift A once more. Type in mapping. Press Shift A one last time and type in normal. These are the three nodes we're gonna use to fix our eyeball. So first, take the UV output of the texture coordinate and put it into the vector input of the mapping node. Take the normal output of the normal node and place it into the location and scale inputs of the mapping node. Now, all you need to do is take the vector output of the mapping node and place it into the vector input of each texture node that you have used. So the albedo texture and the OPA texture. And this will make our character's eyes appear to be closed. Now, you should be able to move your character's eyelids freely without them messing up or looking weird, just like this. See? Now let's do our character's eyes. First things first, Reset your principal BSDF, press backspace. Now, delete the ambient and reflective. All you need to do here is duplicate your eye albedo texture one, two times. Now the albedo texture for your eye is special because it decides the color for your eye. So, let's go into the file folder and select a different albedo texture for your eye. In this case, we'll be using MIALB15, giving our character cyan orange eyes. Now. Let's slide this duplicate down here, press the file fold and type in I. To see a normal texture for your eye right here, this weird LSD circle right here. Now with any NRM texture, you're going to need a normal map. So let's search, type in normal map. Let's add our normal map. Color output of the eye goes into the color input of the normal map. Normal output goes into the normal input of the principal BSDF. Color space goes to non-color. Now let's take our last duplicate node and open its file folder. Let's go ahead and type I in the search bar and scroll until you see M-I-E-M-M or M-I emission. This basically just determines whether or not your character's eyes light up. You will take the color output for the M-I emission and place it all the way down here into the emission input of the principal BSDF. As you can see, nothing in particular has changed, but if we mess with the emission strength down here, you'll see our character's eyes glow very slightly. I will be honest, this is kind of optional if you don't want your character's eyes to light up, but I think it's just a cool thing that you can do with your character's eyeballs. Now, we wanna actually be able to move our character's eyes, and fortunately, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is head back into our eyelids right here, select the texture coordinate, mapping, and normal nose that we use to move our character's eyelids, press copy, Head back into our character's eye model. Press Control V. Make sure you take out the normal input for scale before you do anything. And now all we need to do is take the vector output of our mapping node and place it into the vector input of every single texture that we've used. Pretty simple. Okay, so our character now has fully textured and movable eyelids and eyes. Now let's move on to our character's hair. Now most of the hair rules apply for texturing the afro, but it's a little special since it doesn't have any suction cups. So first things first, we're going to get rid of our ambient and reflective nodes right here. We're going to reset our principal BSDF by pressing backspace. We're going to take the albedo texture for our character's hair and duplicate it one, two, three, four times. Team color should be abbreviated TCL in your character's hair folder right here. All we need to do here is add a mix RGB node, drag it between the albedo textured and principal BSDF, Take the TCL texture and drag its color output into the factor input of the MixRGB node. 
And once you've completed those steps, our character now has fully colorable hair. In this case, we'll just make it red. Let's give our character's hair a little more detail. So let's start with the normal map. So go ahead into the file folder of one of your duplicates, select the M Team Color NRM texture. Add a normal map, slide its normal output into the normal input of the principled BSTF, switch from sRGB to non-color. Let's move on to the TRM texture of our character's afro. So let's go ahead and duplicate this mix RGB node up here. Take the color output of the TRM texture, place it into the color two input of our character's mix RGB node. Take the first mix RGB node right here, take its color output and place it into the color one input of the new mix RGB node. And then we'll take the color output of our character's mix RGB node right here and place it into the subsurface color input of the principal BSDF. And we will set the subsurface to 0.2. And now that gives our character's hair just a little tiny bit of detail. Now let's talk about THC. THC stands for thickness map, which is essentially like the thickness of your character's hair, how dense it looks. So let's go ahead and open up that texture. Thickness map will give a lot more detail to your character's hair if you know how to use it properly. First, we're going to duplicate our mix RGB node right here. So select it, shift D, and drag it right here. Go ahead and connect the color output of your character's THC node into the factor input of the mix RGB node and set its blend mode to darken. Now take the color output of the mix RGB node and place it into the emission input of the principal BSDF. Now you can see our character's hair has a slight bit more detail with a little bit of a glow. Now we don't want too much detail in our character's hair right here because it looks a little gross. So let's turn our emission strength down a bit. About right here. There. Now if you're using the afro, what I like to do is turn down the roughness to make it extra shiny. Sort of like this. I think the extra shine looks much better on the afro. It just makes it look a bit more glossy and clean. Now that you fully textured your character's hair, let's do their eyebrows. So the eyebrows are very similar to the hair in the sense that they use their character's team color. So let's go ahead and select the model for our character's eyebrows. Remember what you gotta do. You delete the ambient and reflectives. Reset your principal BSDF. And now all you have to do is duplicate your eyebrow texture once. Just like that. Now the eyebrows only have one texture, which is the normal texture and the team color texture. So let's go ahead and select our normal texture. Now remember to add a normal map. Take the color output of the team color normal map into the color input of the normal map. Place the normal output into the normal input of the principal BSDF. And now all we gotta do is add a mix RGB node. Now, if we want our eyebrows to match color, all we need to do is take the hex code from our character's hair color. So just do that by going to the hex tab right here, pressing Control C, get back to the eyebrows, hop back in here, press Control V, and place that factor slider all the way up to about one. And now last thing, just turn down your roughness a bit to give your eyebrows that extra glossiness. And now our character has fully textured eyebrows and hair. So now let's do all of our clothes starting with the shoes. First things first, go ahead, select your shoe model. Since our shoes are duplicates of each other, they use the exact same texture, so you don't need to do this twice. Go ahead, reset your principal BSDF, take the ambient and reflective out, drag your albedo texture, and let's get started. So the same rules pretty much apply here, normal and RGH. That's all you need to worry about for now. So let's head back into our file folder right here. Let's take our roughness map right here drag it into the roughness input of the principal BSDF, switch its color space to non-color, take the normal map right here, drag it down here, add a normal map, color output to color input, normal output to normal input, color space to non-color. Now with clothes, you can actually adjust the normal strength a bit to give it a bit more detail, sort of like this. You can see the finer lines in our shoes now. I think it just makes it look a little bit better. Now there are some textures that you're gonna need to worry about real quick. Now let's add in our metallic texture. Metallic textures are typically abbreviated MTL. All you need to do is literally just take the color output of the MTL texture and place it into the metallic input of the principal BSDF. And there, you're done. So now that we've done our shoes, let's move on to our pants. All you gotta do here, make sure you reset your principal BSDF, get rid of the ambient and reflective, which I already have, and now let's go back through the process once more. You only need to duplicate this twice, so one, two, head into your file folder, select NRM0, select TCL0, drag your normal map down here, shift A to add a normal map node, color output to color input, normal output to normal input, 
Color space goes from sRGB to non-color. Add a mix RGB node, drag it between the albedo and principal BSDF textures. Take your TCL node, put that color output into the factor input of the mix RGB node. Go ahead back up to your hair color up here. Grab the hex code right here from your character's color slider. Head back down to the pants for the color two right here. Go back into the hex tab, press control V. And now your character has fully textured pants. Congratulations. Okay, now let's do our character's shirt. So, same deal here. Reset the principled BSDF. Go ahead and get rid of the ambient and reflective textures right here. Duplicate your albedo texture as needed. Go back to that file folder, select NRM. Go back in once again, select RGH. Go back in there once more and select OPA. And we're ready to get started. So, RGH goes to the roughness inputs. NRM, drag it down here. Shift A to add a normal map right here. Color output goes into color input. Normal output goes into normal input. Push the color space from sRGB to non-color. You can mess with the normal strength just a little bit to make your shirt a little more detailed. We will take the color output of our OPA texture right here, drag it all the way into the alpha input of our principal BSDF. Go down to the material tab right here. Switch the blend mode from opaque to alpha cliff. And there you go. That is your shirt right there. Very nice. And now we move on to the final part of our character, the AirPods. So the AirPods aren't that much different from the other clothes. All you gotta do is select them. You got the same deal right here. You got the same deal right here. So let's get started. Delete the ambient and reflective nodes right here. Select your principal BSDF, reset it with backspace. Go ahead and duplicate your albedo textures however many times you need to. Go into the file folder, select TCL. Go back in, select MTL. Go back in once more, select NRM. Go back in one more time, select EMM. Duplicate it one more time because I forgot to do it. And select RGH. Now, are you ready? Let's count it down. So, step one, RGH, roughness. Take that color output, goes into the roughness input of the principal BSDF. Next one, NRM, drag it down here, shift A, add a normal map right here. Color output to color input, normal output to normal input. Pretty simple, color space to non-color. MTL, pretty easy. Color output to metallic input, right here. Next up is emission. All you gotta do is take the color output right here, drag it all the way to the emission input of the principal BSDF, and you're pretty much done with emission for that one. And last but not least, let's do TCL real quick. So go ahead and add a MixRGB node, place it in between your albedo texture and principal BSDF. Take the TCL texture node right here. Color output goes into the factor input of the MixRGB node. Let's take the hex code from our character's hair. Go ahead and control C. Head back to our AirPods right here, and now control V. And there you go. You now have a fully textured, fully posable Splatoon Blender character.